Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the new house. I got the keys a couple of days ago and I haven't actually started doing anything other than moving the equipment that I'm going to need here and doing an emergency day trip to Sydney. So today's the day that we're going to go and get started. In about 20 minutes I'm going to go and um, head into town and pick Nick, my gardener from Sydney, up. That might sound crazy that my gardener from Sydney is coming down here, but he's gonna stay in the house for um, a couple of days, maybe a week, and get started on the garden. Uh, it just works out cheaper and faster than doing it with local work. Anyway, so Nick is coming down, so I wanted to film this quickly before he comes because obviously I don't think it's cool that I have a camera in his face, but I wanted to show you the new house and the garden before we get going because there is a lot of work to do. This is the master bedroom. The street is just behind the window that is behind the camera. Um, but there's a nice patch there that actually I'm gonna hopefully plant up and I would like to have like an open courtyard. But we'll see how that goes, that's like longer term. Initially, things need to be painted desperately and cleaned desperately and the gutters cleaned out and replaced and all of that sort of thing. It's basically like this place hasn't had any maintenance in like 20 years. It doesn't show up as much on camera as it looks in real life, but this is just an example. So they've loved this house. <laughs> they've lived in it, they've loved it. There's lots of holes and things like that. So my job for the next couple of days is going to be to go around and first I'm going to wash the walls with like vinegar and any mold killing um, chemicals that I can because I'm really paranoid about mold and I'm very sensitive to it. Then I'm going to be patching the holes, sanding the holes and as you can see we're in desperate need of some good painting or even just my painting. So it looks like maybe they decided they were going to try and paint the walls for um, the open house and then decided they couldn't be bothered because the paint doesn't even match um, the other paint and they've not done the world's best job covering it up, but that's fine. I think that this is gonna be a hell of a lot of work, but it's kind of gonna be one of those ones that's really satisfying because you're gonna be able to make it into your house. So where we are now, I will move the camera so you guys can see. So this will be the lounge room. And this house has a bit of a strange floor plan, so we're going to be mucking with it a little bit. And I'm a bit terrified of how much that's going to cost. So right behind me is where we just were, and it's like this weird little enclave that I guess is an office, but because it's right in the front of the house and it's like, it's just in a very strange position. So what I'm going to do is wall this off and this is going to become another bedroom. So currently this is a four bedroom house. And you might be like, why do you need five bedrooms? Well, it's only gonna be a three bedroom house. So welcome to the purple kitchen. It has stuff everywhere because, as I said, I've just been bringing heaps of stuff over and this is all food and equipment that Nick needs to exist in an otherwise empty house for a couple of days. I just haven't had time to actually like set it up because we are about nine days away from the shortest day of the year and <laughs> the daylight hours have just been disappearing so rapidly. But anyway, so I know these things don't look so dire from um, far away, but this kitchen is in a bad state. So not only is it like banged up to within an inch of its life, but it also looks like, you know, like the oven has never been cared for at all. And so all of that would need to be replaced anyway. So I'm moving the kitchen because this is in a really annoying place in the house. It's right in the center of the house. And then there's this funny little side access here, which means that if you wanted to have a dining table here, which is really the only place to put it, you essentially block off access to this rumpus room. So what we're gonna be doing is taking this out, putting a fireplace in there, and then couch in front of. The weird little enclave is gonna remain a rumpus room, dining room type situation, but Behind me, behind here, is a um, another bedroom. So we're gonna bash that in and the kitchen is gonna go there so that from the kitchen I can just look straight out to the garden. Now, whether you're gonna be able to see this because of the lighting is questionable, 
but it's quite early and it's a public holiday and I don't want to wake up the um, neighbors. So you can see they've fenced off like a little courtyard which they kept their dog in. So I'm going to have that fencing removed and I'm thinking because Raph has run into the corner of a house once or twice before and smashed his leg up um, that I might fence it off so they can't run up and down the side of the house and that this might be like kind of like a courtyard of flowers that are not so safe around puppies but we shall see they don't really seem to show i mean of all the insane things that raffi staffy does and all the ways he tries to break himself on a daily basis he doesn't seem that interested in eating toxic flowers which is nice just you know chocolate and whatever else he can find so laundry is one of the areas i'm looking forward to doing because it is banged up I'm gonna have to replace this door because I'm not even gonna show you, but the other side is like, oh, this hadn't been cleaned in forever. The, um, there's kind of like a drop outside, there's no step. Um, so you just have to take like a, a leap of faith as you walk out the door. But also that door is just like so filthy. I don't know how it's so filthy, but it's disgusting. So anyway, it's gonna go and it's all gonna get a fresh lick of paint. And I actually don't mind these blue tiles. Um, in the kitchen, I'm going with kind of um, White Hampton style um, doors and a kind of pale eucalyptus-y color um, tile splashback. So blue will be fine. So it'll kind of be like a country Hamptons vibe, possibly with touches of um, Art Deco because if, if I can afford it, and I have no idea how much this is gonna cost, but I would like to get some stained glass in here because I grew up in a house with um, very decorative ceilings and stained glass um, windows just because it was such an old house um, that that's kind of how they did it back then and I like live for stained glass. So I know the lighting is terrible right now and that's because the window's this way but this is where the kitchen is going to be and I'm going to be able to hand food straight out the window onto the deck of the deck Again, needs some love. None of this has had any love in like a really long time, but it's going to be really nice to have um, the ability to look out into um, straight out into the garden and it will kind of open up the floor plan um, and just have a more open flow of the house. I would like to potentially look at putting a skylight in because, you know, obviously a small window. Um, and as much light as we can and because of the way they built the deck they've really built it so when you go out the um, the roof is kind of like making it feel claustrophobic um, but you know one step at a time the kitchen is kind of expensive so we shall see when and if skylights can happen but that might be a, a long-term situation so it's a pretty big deck but it is a bit banged up it hasn't been cared for in a long time it's got splatters of paint from god knows what all over it and it's been built in a way that facilitates termites which is unfortunate so i am going to have to do something about this relatively quickly so just for another perspective that is where the kitchen is going to be looking down into the garden so as i said needs a lot of maintenance needs a lot of love and to be honest, it's probably going to get removed rather than given a lot of love. But I guess that kind of depends on the builder's quote and how quickly the approval comes back from council. Not that I've put it in yet, but I've only had the, the keys for like two and a half days. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Um, in the interim, I'll probably just tidy it up because they used to keep a whole bunch of garbage underneath here so there is some broken glass and stuff underneath there that i'm going to have to deal with because it's always rafa it's always rafa that finds some way to break himself and if there is a way to hurt himself he'll find it basically but what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks is let's show you so there's a big tree here it's a big iron bark tree now it has evidence of um, termites in it, but not active termites, but you can see how close it is to the house. So given that they've built the deck in a way that facilitates termites into the house, I want that tree gone. Um, so it is gone ASAP. Um, so that'll happen in maybe one week, maybe two. 
and they're also going to take out this other tree which is unfortunate because it is beautiful but it is very diseased so you can see it's got this beautiful curve to it but it is diseased so it's got to go um, it's also casting quite a bit of shade here it is early in the morning um, but at the moment this garden is not as full sun as I would like some of that is because it's winter and the, the position of the sun is not as favorable um, in winter now I know that this is going to get more sun in summer because my best friend lives three doors down so it's kind of going to be an everybody loves Raymond situation literally because I sometimes call her Raymond because her name's Rachel so it is a real shame to lose this tree because it's beautiful and I love the curve of it but it's diseased it's kind of flopped over in a weird angle so it's kind of at a high risk of breaking so you know so Nick is going to be working on clearing out all of this so over the next couple of days so we I want basically a blank slate so we're going to get rid of all of this sayonara agapanthas because I hate them and get rid of the camellias because I hate them so what I'm going to do now is run around and give you guys more of a close-up look about what we're going to be working on so you can kind of get more of a before and after and then once the trees are gone and there is the other big tree in the yard it needs to go too because it's got termite nests in it and it's already dropped a branch that's damaged um, the fence like not in the last two and a half days but it's fairly obvious that it's happened recently but that one's going to have to get council approval to come down so that's not coming down imminently but we're going to have a lot of firewood very soon There is a huge amount to do in, in this house and in this yard. Part of the reason why I want to clear out a lot of the ferns and other existing plants is to minimize snake habitat going into summer. My dogs love to chase lizards and I don't particularly want them chasing snakes. So while Nick got to work in the garden, I got to work inside and I started by vinegaring the walls. Cleaning the walls made me realize what condition the walls really are in when you look up close. There's going to be a lot of work. That's insane. It's half an hour's work. Yeah. You're wildly efficient. As Nick was pulling out the ferns, we discovered huge amounts of outdoor tiles and cinder blocks and bricks all hidden away underneath all the plant life. So we started spreading them out along it's the base of the colour bond fences to stop Nick the dogs from digging out. out. The fences are going to need a little bit of TLC to get them up to scratch. And unfortunately there are two different colours but Looks like that's life and we're just going to have to deal tomorrow. with it. And we've got to get ready for some bonfires. In the area I live, it's not uncommon for people to clear out their gardens in winter and have backyard burns. 
So with so much stuff to get rid of, there was no way we were gonna do like 10 trips to the dump to get rid of the greens. So my best friend and her kids came round at the end of the week and we worked on getting everything burnt off safely in the backyard with all of us there supervising. So with three adults on standby and a whole bunch of hoses ready to go, we started clearing out what Nick was pulling out of the yard. What we discovered as Nick cleared out the backyard was that that funny shaped tree was actually a second part of the st still standing iron bark that had fallen over and rerouted. So that's pretty incredible. It was a long night, but we cooked our dinners in the coals and eventually we got through mm. a huge amount of the green product that Nick had pulled out of the garden. It's been a little over a week now. I have vinegared, vinegar, I can't even speak, vinegared half the walls that aren't getting ripped out in this house. And I've sugar soaked the roof and the walls in three big rooms and I'm so sick of reaching overhead. My shoulders feel absolutely smashed. So I think I'm done sugar soaping for this weekend. Um, down at home next week, I'll be here for four days, um, but I've got to go back to work as well. Um, so I was planning on sanding where I had patched, obviously not these ones. These ones aren't even dry yet. I've only just done these today, um, but I need an extension cord for the sander, so. That can wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow what I want to do is paint. Um, but I don't want to start today and then have to stop because once you sort of get going with painting, you just need to keep going. And it's already like 2.30, so uh, look, I'm knackered. We were here till 11.30 last night um, doing the bonfire and burning off just about everything from the garden that got ripped out this week. I'm about to go out and chop up the little bit that wouldn't burn and chuck it in the bin um, but we did a huge amount last night and that was after I'd spent all day either with tradies or sugar soaping ceilings and walls so I am knackered but I think today what I'll do is I'll go and chop out this um, I think it's called Monstera um, huge plant very heavy and I'll chuck all that out and get that done today and then I'm just going to go home and call it quits. There's so much I need to do at home and I actually would like to see my dogs. <laughs> I've barely seen them in 10 days so yeah I think oh I'm almost done for this week but in the same breath I'm like really frustrated that I can't do more and then I have to wait for everything and patience is a virtue I do not have. So let's go and have a look at the garden and see how different it looks now. It looks you won't believe it. So Nick was out there working for the equivalent of four days. It's just mental. So this is what I've got to chop up and get in the bins now. But look at how different this yard looks. It's a clean slate. And it looks so, so, so much cleaner. And so much longer as well without all those shrubs around the trees at the back. But I'll show you a couple of things we unearthed. I don't remember this being here before. It looks like the kind of place you would maybe put a garden shed, but it also struck me as a really nice place to sit and enjoy the garden. Um, not that the deck is a bad option for that. But what we discovered is this iron bark here that looked like a strange tree is actually it was a second trunk on this one. You can see here where it's fallen off and then it's re-rooted. And that's why it's this weird shape. But how cool is that, that it's re-rooted? It's like, like Fern Gully, like your own private secret garden. It's incredibly beautiful and moss covered. And in a way I'd love to keep it, but I had the termite guy out yesterday and he said because there's wood on the floor it's a huge termite risk so sadly this beautiful tree really does have to go now but something else I'm going to have to work on over the coming weeks is picking up all of these fern seeds so they don't 
replant themselves in and around here. There's so many of them. Ugh, but I just don't know that I have the will to do it today. But check out how clear this all is now. It just looks so much better. The not so great thing is we've discovered there's a lot of funner webs in this yard, which if you're not Australian, they're bad. But they're very, very poisonous. And apparently in this little oh, going blind garden bed, there are a heap of them and around the bottom of this tree there was a whole stack of families and when we were doing the um, bonfires last night this was my fire back here but as I was scooping things up there was as I was scooping things up there was a stack of little black spiders that came out I don't know if they were funnel webs because it was really really dark but I look forward to dealing with that. Before I got started on the painting, I went home to grab a vacuum cleaner. I don't know why I didn't bring one with me, but I also had a big brunch, so hopefully I'll be able to work the whole way through the day without having to go home, even though the puppies get more crazy when I do that. But I want to quickly set up the compost because I had some vegetable offcuts in the kitchen that was starting to get pretty gross and in need of going in the compost. This is not going to be the forever spot for these um, compost bins. This is just uh, put them in, get them started and out of the way of the tree loppers position. I was going to use some of the fire ash to get it out of the way for the tree loppers um, in the compost bin, but some of it has just started smoking again. So if I do use some, I'm going to need to hose it down pretty thoroughly because it wouldn't be the first time I've put ashes in a plastic container and um, yeah, it didn't go so well. Once I woke up in the middle of the night at my old house in Sydney and the bin was on fire and it was melting down the driveway. So that was great. Don't want that to happen again. We've got two 400 liter compost bins. I've got a whole bunch of um, cardboard that Rafi has very helpfully ripped to pieces for me. I've got grass clippings from last week at home. I brought some worms um, from my home little compost bin and they were only really little and they weren't moving a lot. And I don't know if that's just because it's winter and they didn't have a lot of food because I haven't put anything in there, but hopefully they will find this like a speed dating event and they will all meet up and have lots of babies and very soon we will have a beautiful compost. The other thing I've got is a compost accelerator. I don't know if this actually does anything, but last winter when I tried to start compost, it took forever to even start breaking down. So I wanna try and get this going as soon as possible because as soon as those trees come out, I wanna get garden beds in here. But it's pretty windy out here. I wanna get this done quickly and get to painting, so let's do this. This is not going to be the permanent compost position. This is just a get it started and get it out of the way position. I dabbled with putting either a piece of wood that I had underneath, um, except it didn't really help because the ground isn't perfectly level. Um, and I ended up just putting cardboard underneath the compost just to try and act as a little bit of a bush rat barrier um, and to try and suppress the grass from growing into the compost. But I started by setting up the two compost bins and mostly put a combination of things like grass clippings, um, bones that I had smashed up and kept from uh, making tons and tons of bone broth recently as well as standard kitchen scraps into the compost bins just to try and get them going so that I could have some homemade compost as soon as possible. My compost is not a perfect system. I'm not worried about layering perfectly. I'm just putting what I have in when I have it and hoping for the best. To be honest, I don't even bother pulling the uh, sticky tape off the boxes. I just put them straight in the compost. I have found that the worms leave the sticky tape for me um, and I just pull it out when I go to use the compost. It's not ideal, but I've only got so much time, so I just put the boxes pretty much straight in and hope that the worms enjoy it.
we are back and I feel a lot better having had a couple of hours off yesterday. What I'm going to do today or hopefully is sand all the many many patches that I made as long as they're all dry and at least two thirds of them should be dry. I only did a couple yesterday by comparison. Um, and then I want to paint the walls. I'm not going to do the ceiling because the ceiling makes me angry. <laughs> the ceiling and I need a break after the week that has been scrubbing ceilings. Um, so, and also I want to double check that the paint that I have, which is a, a primer and a sealer or one of the two, I can't remember. Um, and it is a, um, anti mold, um, paint because I'm very sensitive to mold. Um, I want to double check if that is supposed to go onto the ceiling as well, but also I just like, I can't deal with ceilings. But I've also got to go around and um, put patches on the wall, like little um, post-it notes. And a lot of them have to go on the ceilings actually, um, for the builder and the jib rocker to come back and have a look at, and the electrician to come back and have a look at, so that they can all quote for the work that needs to be done. So, I mean, the place looks so much better after having a vinegar scrub and a sugar soap and water scrub. Um, it looks so much better, but then when you look closer, you can still see, you know, everything. There's lots of like writing on the wall. There's gouge marks into the window frames. There's a lot of work to be done. So let's see how we go. I ideally want to do sand and paint three rooms and a um, half the foyer. And then if I can, I want to do sugar soaping in the bathroom and maybe the, the walk-in. Because they've been vinegared, they just haven't been sugar soaped. Um, and I don't, couldn't find safety goggles this morning and I couldn't find my snorkeling goggles. So, let's get to it. We're back now, it is all the same. It doesn't take very long for the um, for the sanding paper to actually fall off. I barely finished one room. Um, this door has come out so well compared to what it looked like before. So I'm really proud of that. There's still some marks that I'm gonna have to um, patch up from where the puppy obviously chewed this door to within an inch of its life. Um, so I will patch this one up again, but this I wasn't planning on painting any of the trims today. As is often the case, I changed course with what I wanted to get done because I realized I didn't have the energy to paint and I didn't have as much daylight left as I thought I did. So I decided to set up the first veggie bed. This was a pre-existing bed that I tidied up and to be honest I didn't really have enough soil to fill it but I decided to make do. I had all these seedlings that were more than ready to go into the ground and they just needed to go in. I was going to be in Sydney for the next few days so I wanted them in the ground and starting off growing and not to waste any more of winter cold growing season. I planted a mix of crops and to be honest I know I over planted it. I want to loosely try planting with the um, square foot method. I have the book, I have the um, stencil that helps you map out how much to plant in a given area but 
haven't had time to deal with it yet so I just decided to start putting everything in so there were onions marigolds broccoli cauliflower broad beans um, and some beets that oh I don't think they're gonna produce much of a bulb <laughs> there were not much root left by the time I actually managed to separate them and I also planted some silver beet and spinach and uh, some thyme in this garden bed. Even as I was planting the seedlings I think I knew that I was massively over planting or planting too densely but it's just kind of one of those things you're in a new house there's one garden bed for you to play with and you've got your birdies guard birdies raised garden beds in the garage and you just don't know when they're going to be up and filled so you jam everything all into one bed It feels amazing to have something planted. I don't actually have time to mulch this in. I will deal with that when I get back from Sydney. I'm really excited though to have a garden bed up and planted. I've planted quite a bit of stuff. There's all spinach and lettuce jammed around cauliflowers and broccoli. It is really windy now and it's getting really cold and I've got to go and get ready for dinner and clean up a little bit before the tree loppers come in maybe on Wednesday. So thanks for hanging out with us during this first week in the new house and I'll see you in the next one.